Hey, how's it going guys? My name is Dom and in today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to make your HTML buttons do something when you click on them. Okay, so today's video is going to be perfect for you guys who have learned some HTML and they want to step it up a little bit and make your websites actually do something when you click on those buttons. Okay, now the example covered is going to be essentially uh, when the user clicks on the button, it's going to ask them for for their name. They can then enter their name and it's going to then display their name in a nice greeting message on the page. Okay, so very simple, but if you haven't used JavaScript before, today's video is definitely going to interest you. Now, before jumping right into the code and making everything work, today's video is sponsored by Fusion Charts. Fusion Charts is a feature packed library full of responsive and interactive charts, graphs, and gauges, making it a perfect fit for your next dashboard or data visualization project. Let me show you how easy it is to create a bar chart using Fusion Charts. To install, you can use NPM or you can paste in the HTML using Fusion Charts CDN. To render a chart using Fusion Charts, we can create a new chart container in the HTML. We can now head inside the JavaScript below and create a new instance of Fusion Charts passing through all of the properties and options, including the charts type. We can then pass through the data itself and then lastly call the render method and we're good to go. And as we can see, it was that easy to create a bar chart using Fusion charts. You can also change your theme. I can paste in the fusion theme right there and then provide the theme as being fusion. Then if I go back in the browser, we're going to get this beautiful theme right here. It also integrates nicely with your favorite JavaScript framework such as React, Angular, or Vue. So go to fusioncharts.com or click on the link in the description below to begin your free trial today. Okay, so we can see here, uh, we're starting off with a new index.html document with nothing inside the body. Now, um, if you guys aren't using Visual Studio Code as your text editor, I do recommend that you actually go ahead and download it for this video because it's going to make it a little bit easier to follow along. And you're also able to access the extension, which is called Live Server. And this here, once you install it, it's going to allow you to automatically refresh your code changes in the browser. So if you make a change to your code here and go back in the browser, it's going to instantly refresh. So once you install this extension right here, you can then head back inside your code and just press F1. Then you type out live server, open with live server, and now it's gonna open up your web page inside the browser right here, and any changes you make is gonna be automatically refreshed. Okay, so once you're inside the web browser, the first thing to do is gonna be to head inside the top right corner here, press these three dots and drop down to the more tools section and just click on the developer tools right down here. So it's currently off screen, but it's right down there or you can just press F12, okay? So once you're inside here, you're gonna see the console. If you can't see the console, just go to the console section at the top and you should be good to go. So this right here is the JavaScript console. You're able to uh, log things out using JavaScript and it's gonna appear here. This is gonna help us inspect what's actually going on with the code we're gonna write today. Okay, so we can just clear the console right up here and push it to the right side and we can head back inside the text editor. So let's get a new HTML button inside the body. So let's make a new button right here with a type of button, okay? And for the button text, we can just say something like click me. Very straightforward. Now, we're gonna also want to give this button here an ID. So we'll say ID is equal to, then just say my BTN. Now, you're gonna wanna use camel case here, which means basically lowercase for the first word in your ID and then uppercase, sorry, first letter and then uppercase for every letter after that. So we can see here we get lowercase m, y, capital B, T, N for my B, T, N. It's important, uh, you know, once we get to the JavaScript code that you type out these characters in the exact same casing as they are here. 
So we have this ID on this button. It's going to allow us to then access this button in the JavaScript code. So I can save this and go back in the browser and we're going to get something like this. Okay, so now if we head back inside the text editor, we can hop down at the end or at the bottom of the body. So right before your closing body tag, open a new script tag here. Inside here, we can put some JavaScript code. Okay, so firstly, let's get a reference to this button in the JavaScript. Okay, so right down here, we'll type out const my btn is equal to document dot get element by id then pass through here my btn so what's happening right here well we're defining a new constant okay you may have heard the word variable you know um every now and then it's a very similar concept so basically we're just saying look when i say my btn in the javascript code i'm referring to this value here and this value is going to get us a reference to this button in the HTML. So we're saying here, let's access the document and we'll say, get me the element or the tag, okay, with the ID, so by ID, with the ID of my BTN. Okay, so essentially we're saying, look, this has to match this right up here. Okay, now this constant here doesn't need to be the same name as your ID. We can call this bottle, as in water bottle. Let's type out water bottle as an example, right? That's still gonna work, okay? Only this needs to match up, the one in quotes, okay? Now, if I drop down here, I'll say console.log, then pass through water bottle. So basically, we're just saying, look, let's log to the console, the developer tools, the value of this constant. I can save this and go back in the browser. We can see we get this right here in the console, a reference to the HTML button. As we can see, upon hovering over it, you're gonna see in the top left corner also be a little bit hovered or a little bit um, you know, visible there, okay? With the pink and the you know, green and yellow. So that's your reference to your button. You can now do things with that button in the JavaScript. So going back inside the text editor, we can drop down and we're gonna make this button do something. So we'll say water bottle. Now I might, I might just make this back to my BTN just for a little bit more, I guess it makes more sense, right? It's actually a button, so we'll say my BTN or my button. So we'll say my button dot add event listener. Okay, so on that button, we're gonna say click inside your double quotes here. So we're saying here, look, we're gonna say when the user clicks on the button, okay, that's called an event. So we're saying, look, add the event listener, which means listen for the event of a click, okay? Then when the user clicks on that button, we can put a comma and we'll now say uh, function like that, then open up the uh, brackets here, and then just say E inside there. Then using uh, opening and closing curly braces, we can drop down and put a semicolon to finish this off. And now basically what's gonna happen is when the user clicks on the button, the code inside this function here is going to run. So a function is just like a little holder for some code, okay? Now, we're gonna say inside here, console.log, once again, this time, just saying to the console, the button was clicked, just like that. I can save this and go back in the browser. As we can see, if I click on the button, we get the button was clicked right there in the console. So now we've successfully attached an event listener to the button, okay? So that's all good to go. We can now ask the user for some information. But first, I wanna show you what this E is. The reason why I'm showing what this E is is because you're probably gonna see this E quite a lot as you, you know, go through more examples online and follow more tutorials and so on. So this E here, if I console.log and I log out the value of this E, go back in the browser, click on the button, we get this right here. 
It's called a pointer event. Basically, this here, if I expand this out, it's called a, well, it's an object in JavaScript which contains a bunch of information about what just happened, the event which has just occurred. An example might be this. If I was to hold the control button on my keyboard and click on the button again, we can see it a second time here. If I expand this object, we can see there's a property called control key with a value of true. This means I was holding down the control key at the time I clicked on the button. Okay, so like I said, it just contains information about the event which has just occurred. If I go back to the previous example or the, or the previous click and expand this one, we get control key is false this time. So it, you know, it wasn't held down. Okay, so that is what that E means. It's just information about the event. So going back inside the text editor, we can change this to now prompt the user for their name. So we'll say const uh, response, or I might say name here as this constant is equal to prompt, okay? Then in uh, you know brackets here, we'll say something like, what is your name? So basically this code right here is gonna ask the user for their name in the browser, then it's gonna store their response inside a constant called name, okay? So now we can just say console.log the value of the name, go back in the browser, click on the button, what is your name? I'll say my name is Dom and press okay. In the console now we get Dom, that is my response, that is the current value of the name constant or variable, okay? Right. So now moving forward, we can get my name to be displayed in the actual browser or in the document itself. So now if I drop down here, I can remove this console.log and I can now say something like this. I'll say document.body.innerHTML is equal to, and then within here, I can say h1 and I can say welcome then I can do a comma, space, then say plus name. So right here, we're just saying, look, we're gonna grab onto the body. So document.body refers to your body tag. We're then saying, let's change the actual HTML of the body to be equal to this string right here, this bit of text. Now, I did forget to include our closing H1 here. So I'll now say plus, then just say space and just do a closing H1. So now basically it's gonna say H1, welcome, comma, then your name, which you then imported, then a closing uh, H1. I might even throw in an exclamation mark here to spice it up, okay? Now, this right here is gonna basically produce something like this, where if I get rid of this here, I can do h1 welcome dom, okay? This is what the JavaScript code is gonna produce when I you know, click on the button and enter in my name, this right here. The name is the dynamic value, okay? Let's put this back to the button, okay? Then save it, go back in the browser, click me. I can now say dom, press okay, and there we go, welcome dom. And that's basically it. So I hope today's video has helped you out in some way. Uh, hopefully now when you go online and look at more tutorials and they include things like event listeners, it's gonna make a little bit more sense to you. If you enjoyed today's video, drop a like and subscribe for more web development uh, content like this. And I'll see you guys in the next video.